it's Bible and Stories time. Hi, Mrs. Frazier. Hey, hi, Jacob. You are just in time. We are just getting ready to start reading our next Bible story. Oh, what is it about? Well, it's about Abram, his promised descendants. Mrs. Frazier, is Abram the same person as Abraham? Yes, he is. Well, how come he has two names? Well, we're going to find out. If not in this story, we'll find out in the next story. All right. Jacob, would you like to have prayer? Sure, I can pray. Father God, Elohim, you are the great I am. Father, I just pray that today as we study and learn, that the boys and girls will study and learn with us. That everyone who comes will get to know you better and better every time. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Very good. Thank you so much. All right. So this story comes from Genesis 14 through 15, and it's called Abram is Promised Descendants. After Abram and Lot separated, Lot moved into the land of Sodom. The city became involved in a long war and was eventually taken captive by its enemies. Lot and all of his belongings became the possession of a neighboring land. Abram was told of his nephew's capture and set out to rescue him. With only 318 men, Abram was able to surround Lot's captors and defeat them. Whoa, just with 318 men? That's right. That's pretty amazing. Pretty impressive. Lot was set free and regained all of his family, servants, and belongings. The kings of Sodom and Salem came out to meet Abram and thank him for setting them free. They brought Abram bread and blessed him and his God for the victory. After this, the Lord appeared again to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and great reward. Lord, Abram asked, what will you give me since I still have no son? Should I adopt one of my servants to be my heir? No, you will not need to adopt a servant. The son I give you will be born to your wife. Look out now toward the stars. Are you able to count them all? No, Abram answered. Your children will be as many as there are stars in the sky, the Lord assured him. Abram believed and trusted the Lord, and God counted it to him as righteousness. The Lord told him, I am the Lord that brought you out from your captors to this land that you may inherit it. How shall I know that I shall inherit the land? Abram asked. When the sun went down that day, the Lord caused Abram to fall into a deep sleep. Then he spoke to him again to answer his question. Know for certain that your descendants will have to live in a land that they do not own and will be slaves for 400 years. I will judge the nation that rules them, and when your descendants leave it, it will be with that nation's wealth. You will live a long life and be buried before this takes place. Then the Lord told Abram exactly what land would be given to these descendants who were brought out of captivity. They would be the ones to possess God's promised land after Abram's death. So Jacob. Yes. How did Abram rescue his nephew? Well, he set out to rescue him with just 318 men. That was amazing. And then he was able to surround Lot's captors and defeat them. And Lot was set free. And he regained all of his family, his servants, and his belongings. That's right. Very good. What did Abram propose to the Lord to make sure he had a son? Well, I think he asked him if he needed to adopt someone, right? Yes, that's correct. Will life always be easy for Abram's descendants? No. Well, they're supposed to go through slavery for 400 years. Like, wow, that's such a long time. How come God made them be slaves? Actually, God did not make them be slaves. The people make them be slaves. You see... Jacob, God does not control our choices. We all make choices, but God gets blamed a lot for those choices. How do you mean? Well, I mean that when someone chooses someone to be a slave for 400 years, it doesn't mean that God is the one who did that. But God was the one who said it. Yes, that's true. He was just warning Abram that that's what was going to happen. He wasn't the one that would do it. But what he did say was that he was going to judge them for it. 
how would you feel if like Abraham, you would not live in the promised land yourself? Um, well, Mrs. Frazier, I kind of think it's like what you do. Really? How so? Well, you know, you teach us kids all the time. Like you put the videos together and the curriculum and you have read us our Bible stories and you don't necessarily know everybody that learns from you. And it's okay with you if you don't know, but there's going to be kids that are going to learn for years to come because of the work that you've done. Wow, that is very insightful, Jacob. And you're right. I'm sure Abram didn't mind whether or not, you know, God was going to give him thousands of descendants afterwards. He just knew that he had to obey God now so that the work could be done in the future. Yeah, that's what I mean. You don't mind if God uses all of this that you've done after you go. That's true. Well, Jacob, thank you so much for being with me today in this story. I really value and appreciate your opinions. Well, thank you. Thanks for letting me listen and for asking me the questions. It's fun. All right, boys and girls, if you have any questions yourself around the Bible stories, please go ahead and put them inside of Fetch the Goodness community. We'd love to see you there. That way you can listen to all the Bible stories and you can ask your questions in the comments underneath each video. So God bless you. Always remember, fetch the goodness. Bye. Bye, Jacob. Thank you. Your family can grow with this program series called Bible in Stories, and we'll make sure that the link is below.